A popular way of making coffee at home or in the offices is using automatic espresso machines. We were never really big fans of them, didn't use them too much, until we moved to our new offices. This DeLonghi Magnifica S was sitting on the kitchen counter. Out of curiosity, we tried to figure out the best way to make good tasting coffee. The improvement was quite big, so in this video we want to share 5 tips or areas that should help you to make better coffee on b 2 cup espresso machine. Now, the problem with automatic espresso machine is that it's kind of a black box. It's advertised to be very easy to use, just throw some coffee beans, add water and press the button. The average user shouldn't care about the process. Most people use them out of the box, without any adjustments and don't even know the full potential of these machines. We will cover choosing the right coffee beans and importance of water quality. Then we will show you how to set the brewing parameters on this machine and how to brew better espresso and long coffee. Last but the most important topic will be cleaning. We will use DeLonghi Magnifica S for this demonstration as it's popular, affordable and pretty basic automatic espresso machine. Most if not all tips should be useful even if you use another machine in this category. Ok, let's start with the essential thing. Coffee beans. To brew good tasting coffee using automatic espresso machines, you need to look for well-developed and easier to extract coffees. It's often labeled as espresso roast, but some roasteries even develop a specific roast style for beans to cup machines. Just ask for them. Even if you like light and bright coffee roast for filter coffee, you should avoid it for these machines because it's much harder to extract and you might end up with coffee lacking sweetness and body and it's overly acidic. On the other hand, it doesn't mean you must use dark roasted coffee. We pick coffee from a local specialty roastery Rebel Bean. It's their underdog blend that consists of coffees from Brazil and El Salvador. It was roasted a while ago on the 1st of February, which is already two and a half months. But since we kept the bag closed, it's well rested now and should taste great as espresso. Most roasteries would recommend resting coffee before using it to make espresso for at least one or two weeks. Finding a roast date on the bag is one of the key quality control checks when buying coffee beans. It's better not to add the full bag into the hopper at once because coffee will oxidize and lose its freshness quicker. I suggest refilling hopper daily and keeping remaining coffee stored inside of the bag. We made a video about coffee freshness with some tips and tricks if you want to learn more about this topic. Second, water. Water is one of only two ingredients when making coffee, yet it's often neglected. What you need to do depends on your water source. Ideally, you want to use soft, clean water with low mineral content. There are two things related to water composition. One, longevity of coffee machine. Two, taste of coffee. There is a water filtration system from DeLonghi that can be the universal solution. What's important is to change it regularly according to recommendations from the manufacturer. Also, don't let the water stay for too long in the water tank. It's a good idea to change it at least once per day. Ok, we have coffee beans in the hopper, clean water in the water tank. Let's look at some parameters we can adjust to make our coffee taste better. Grind size. That's perhaps the most surprising and least used adjustment. In general, the finer you grind, the more coffee you extract. Yet, if you go too fine, machine might not have enough power to push water through coffee or it finds its way around it, which is not good and results in an unbalanced cup of coffee. What I found optimal for coffee we tasted was 3 to 2 grind size. Unfortunately, I don't know what is the factory setting, but based on what I have seen looking at the friends machines, I would definitely suggest experimenting with the finer grind size. Dose. It means how much ground coffee will the machine use to brew espresso. You can easily adjust it on the front panel. Visuals suggest it influences the strength of coffee. We use a tip from James Hoffman's video to measure minimum and maximum dose for single espresso in our setup. It was 8.5 grams minimum and 13.5 grams maximum. That information will be useful when thinking about the optimal recipe. By the way, James' video is great if you want to go a little deeper into how automatic espresso machines work and how to dial them properly. Yield. It means how much coffee ends up in your cup. The factory setting is about 40 grams for espresso 
and 120 grams is for long coffee and twice as much for double espresso and double long coffee. You can quite easily reprogram it by holding the button for five seconds and then pressing it again when the required volume of coffee is in the cup. If you can use scales, it gives you more precise information about the amount of coffee in your cup. The last adjustment worth exploring is water temperature. If you plan on using medium roasted specialty coffee, you should definitely go higher to increase the coffee extraction. There are four levels. Three or four is what you should choose. Lower temperature is more suited for dark roasted coffee. Four, better espresso and long coffee. Now it's time to make coffee. I will start by pressing a rinse button and placing a cup under the coffee spout. I do it for three reasons. One, it cleans the spout from remaining dry coffee or any dirt, which is very important, especially in the offices, where I don't have a good control over the use of the machine. Second, it heats up the whole brewing mechanism. And three, it heats up the cup. I clean the cup and I'm ready to brew. I move the coffee spout so it's just above the cup Press the single espresso button. Coffee should be slowly pouring from coffee spouts, not dripping nor splashing all around. If it does, you need to adjust either grind size or dose. For this coffee, I found the best taste when used grind size 2. Dose 9.5 grams yield 36 grams and brew ratio is 1 to 3.8. For most automatic home espresso machines, it seems that this good tasting window is in the range of one part of ground coffee to three to four parts of coffee in the cup. Your taste is the ultimate judge though, numbers are here just to give you a reference. In the end, I like to rinse the coffee spout again to keep it cleaner for the next brewing. If you want a bigger cup but the same strength, I recommend pressing multiple times espresso. It takes longer, but since you made an effort for this single espresso to taste good, it will give a much, much better result than pressing the double espresso button. If you want a bigger cup, but milder taste, I recommend pressing single espresso again and diluting it with the hot water from a kettle to your taste. This way you extract the best out of this coffee without any sacrifice. If you press long coffee instead and don't change any parameters, you extra coffee, but then extra 80 milliliters of water will run through coffee, which often results in bitter, astringent or simply not pleasant taste. The last quick tip is about milk steaming. This machine has a steam wand. Not a very powerful one, yet it can be used. What I saw people struggle with is the water coming out of the steam wand at the beginning. The best way to go about it is to place a cup under the steam wand first, Wait for it to heat up and then let all the water go out. Only when steam comes out, it's ready for milk steaming. Also, it's important to use a milk pitcher. Otherwise, it's much more difficult to steam the milk and then pour it into the cup. Five, cleaning and maintenance. The cleaning, which is in my opinion, the most neglected part of using automatic espresso machine. I'm guilty myself. Pressing the button is so easy that I often don't follow the next steps. The user manual is actually pretty good in describing cleaning routines, so go ahead and look at it if you haven't done it yet. I will just make a short summary here. After every brewing, I like to rinse coffee spout with an extra water to immediately remove most coffee droplets. If you use steam wand, this should be also cleaned immediately after using. Every day, it's a good idea to clean ground coffee container and drip tray. Otherwise, you might end up with dirty water flooding your kitchen counter. You should also clean coffee spout with wet sponge or cloth often. Every month or so, I would open an inner part of the machine to clean coffee infuser properly and brush out all the ground coffee from the inside of the machine. The last thing I mention is descaling. Machine will prompt you to run a descaling cycle quite often, in my opinion. It's a lengthy process that takes about 45 to 60 minutes in total. Just count on this maintenance routine and cost to keep the machine in a good shape for longer. Okay, so let's sum it up. To make a good tasting coffee on automatic espresso machine, you need to choose high quality coffee that is roasted for espresso machines. Use clean soap water with low mineral content. Adjust grind setting and dose to make a good tasting espresso and then use it as a base for longer or milk coffee. Then don't forget to clean your machine regularly. Now it's your turn. Let us know what we missed and what is your experience when using automatic espresso machine. 
Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.